Sudha children, this is a history class. In the last class, we are discussing the fourth chapter that is tribals, daikus and the vision of a golden age. In this chapter, we are discussing the life of tribals before and after the coming of British. So, uh, how they live? What is their occupation? The first one, uh, the, we are discussed so many, we are pointed so many occupation that is shifting cultivation, hunter and gatherers, herders and settled cultivation. In the last class, we discussed the shifting cultivation. And today, we are discussing some were hunters and gatherers. Hunters, what is the life of hunters and gatherers? In many regions, tribal groups lived by hunting and hunting animals and gathering forest produce. Forest land, our produce, our forest things, na collect you. Hunt you, animals la hunt you. Which one, our do? Do you They saw forests as essential for survival. The Hundas were such a community living in the forest of Orissa. They regularly went out on collective hunts and then divided the meat among themselves. After hunting, they divided the meat among themselves. They ate fruits and roots collected from the forest and cooked food for, with the oil they extracted from the seeds of sal and mahua. That was trees. The sal, mahua, and other trees na extract either the oil which it have in the shadow. They cook their food. They used many forest shrubs and herbs for medical purposes and sold forest produce in the local market. Kare herbs, shrubs, or medicinal purposes, never use it. And also sold it in the market, nearest market. Our forest in the nearest market. The local weavers and leather makers turned to the cons when they needed supplies of kusum and palash flowers to color their clothes and leather. Apa kusum palash one and flowers and layer. Apadil and I don't like another colors. Flowers in the color extracted and I know. So these tribal papers collect these. Uh, flowers and sell to the uh, the cloth and leather makers. Cloth ilum, dye and leather ilum, dye and wana vare indha dye and kusumum palash manna flowers you see indha indha. So, these were collected by, these were grown in the forest. Appa forest land avum, appa vari tribal peoples collect these kusum and uh, palash and give sold to these leather and the cloth makers. From where did these forest people get their supplies of rice and other grains? They eat the hunted meat. They eat the meat. Fruits, roots and they also cook some meat to eat. And how they get rice? How they get grains? At time, they exchanged goods, getting what they needed in return for their valuable forest produce. We have to forest land, we have valuable medicines, herbs, shrubs, and shrubs. market nearby market. Flowers, okay, um, color extract, flowers, and okay, market supply. For supplying these goods, they get back what they need. So they demanded rice or grains. So they get these products. At other times they brought goods with the small amount of earnings they had. earnings some of them did odd jobs in the villages, carrying lots or building roads, while others labored in the fields of peasants and farmers. They odd jobs in the villages, carrying load. Building roads, road and dark fields, peasants and farmers in the fields. So they earn some money and they buy some grains or rice. When supplies of forest produce shrank, tribal people had to increasingly wonder 
around in search of work as laborers. But many of them, like in Baigas of Central India, were reluctant to do work for others. Some were reluctant to work in the Eastern Ayurveda, which is much lower than the Jolier. The Baigas saw themselves as people of the forest who could only live on the produce of the forest. It was belonged to dignity of Baigas to become a laborer. Avirka by gas on a community in Dairo. Our tribe and Dairo, Avirka and Dana, Porto by Jolie, the Kanada, our record light on a container. Our forest group led the producer, Bioch Condanesi, we can amend the other tribe. Our tribe in the Uru Tirman. Some herded animals, others herded animals. I reckon many tribal groups lived by herding and rearing animals. They were pastoralized who move with the herds of cattle or sheep according to the season. When the grass in a place were exhausted, they moved to another area. So, some were rearing animals. So, they uh, live in a part of a forest. After exhausting the grass in that place, they moved to another area. When the grass in one place exhausts, they move to another area. The Van Ujas of the Punjab hills and the Labadis of the Andhra Pradesh were cattle herders and Ghadis of Kulu were shepherds and the Bangarwalas of Bakarwalas of Kashmir reared God. You will read more about them in your history book next year. So, some were weird animals, some were engaged in hunting and gathering, some were engaged in sh shifty cultivation. And the group of people were engaged in settled cultivation. Some people also engaged in settled cultivation. What is settled cultivation? Even before the 19th century, many from within the tribal group had began settled down and cultivating their fields in one place year after year instead of moving from one place to from place to place or sell the matter to sell they can move away they would work the city later then they started cultivation they began to use the plow and gradually got rights over the land they live on in many cases like the mundas of chota nagpur and the land belongs to the clan as a whole or Tribe in a motta mayanuru or area of land. Therefore, all of them had right on the land. Very often, some people within the clan acquired more power than others. Some people become chief and others followers. Powerful men often rented out their land instead of cultivating them themselves. So, in the Mundas, Mundas la. The, the right on the land was belongs to a clan or clan so the powerful men became the chief and they uh, they rented their land to the others to cultivate British officials so settled tribe groups like the Gons and Sandalas as more civilized than hunter gatherer or shifting cultivators Shifting cultivators, hunter gatherers, more civilized are settled cultivators. The settled tribe groups were more uh, <coughs> civilized than the hunter gatherers and the shifting cultivators. Those who lived in the forest were considered to be wild and savage. They needed to be settled and civilized. So they were more civilized, settled. So cultivators and the Britishers are more civilized than the hunter and gatherers and the shifting cultivators. So this was the living pattern or the occupations they engaged in the during the British rule. So what is the problem they face after the coming of British we can discuss in the next class. Thank you.